So coming to Azure, what and all, what technology you know in Azure, what services you know in Azure, what are the services you are good in that? IaaS. Okay. IaaS pass services. So like I mean, I'm asking about any load balancer. Do you know about load yes, balancer sir. storage? So those kind of services yes. I'm asking. I, yes, sir. I have a expertise in a peering mm -hmm. concept, mm -hmm. load balancer, okay. energy, mm -hmm. appli application security group. Mm -hmm. Okay. So finally, let us start. So why do we use VNet peering? What is the purpose of VNet peering? Yeah, VNet peering we use VNet peering to make connection between uh, within the VNet machines. We deploy multiple machines in our VNet, mm -hmm. and uh, we have we have to enable communication between communication with another VNet. So okay. we use peering to make connection between two different VNets. To make a communication between two different VNets. Yes. Okay. How many data storages you will get in one storage account? Four. Four. So what are those? And explain in detail. So blob storage. Mm -hmm. In blob storage, uh, we can um, we can maintain a huge amount of data like unstructured and structured data. Mm -hmm. um, queues, file shares, mm -hmm. tables. In file share, we can uh, we can share our uh, we can share a folder to access everyone in the company. Okay. So what about tables and queues? Queues are nothing but uh, it's uh, configured like uh, one after one. Okay. So let us talk about uh, load balancers. Are you good in load balancers? Yes. Okay. So tell me about load balancers. Load balancers are uh, actually configured to maintain the traffic, to distribute the traffic equally. Mm. If the traffic may increases, it uh, it divides and uh, execute the traffic to different servers at a time. Okay. By using the front end IP, we assign a uh, we assign a IP to the browsing. So what exactly? How many load balances we have in Azure? Two load, two load balance. Okay. Public load balance or private load balance. Okay. So what is exactly NSG? Network Security Group. Uh, okay. Um, by using the NSG, we can uh, as we can write rules, mm -hmm. both inbound and outbound rules, mm -hmm. uh, to give permissions or restrict. We can assign the rules. By okay. depending on the rules, we can uh, assign uh, allow or deny. So what allow? Uh, what are you going to allow? Traffic. Okay. What kind of traffic? Traffic like uh, internet, mm -hmm. um, like a server stormcat, mm -hmm. um, HTTPD. Okay. Uh, likewise, servers. So, on have. which basis you are going to allow? I mean, <clears throat> so for example, I have somewhere around 20 web servers, I have somewhere around 20 app servers. Okay. Now, my goal is I need to send I need to send the traffic from web server to app server. Mm -hmm. So, what should be the best practice? How you write a rule? We, we can write an inbound rule by so, so web server. I have 10 or 20 servers, right? Okay. If you write one web server, that is not correct, right? So I'm saying I have 10 web servers, 10 app servers. Now I need to try, I need to send a traffic from web to app. Okay. Got my question. So what is the best practice to create a, how to create a missions and how to write a rule? What should be the best practice? We can choose the IP address. What IP address? Uh, range. By While writing the rule, we can uh, assign the IP address range or particular uh, IP address. Mm -hmm. We can assign like this. Mm -hmm. So we can take the particular IP address range in the VNet, which we have missions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You just tell me step by step. Mm -hmm. Now I have given a project stating that yes, I am uh, Ganesh. I have 10 web servers, 10 app servers. My traffic needs to go from web to app. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I have given you servers. Now you need to write a rule now. Mm -hmm. So how do you write exactly? How do you configure everything? Security wise, NSG wise. Now you tell me. <coughs> the creation of energy, I will take the inbound rules mm -hmm. and uh, write a rule. I will choose the uh, my uh, IP address ranges. Mm -hmm. In the IP address ranges, we have 20 missions mm -hmm. like, and I have taken the range. So mm -hmm. in that uh, range, how many missions are there, the missions will apply to all the rules. Mm -hmm. apply, uh, the rule will apply to all the ranged uh, VMs mm -hmm. and uh, I will take the source as a web server. Mm -hmm. Mm. So source as a 
web server web server yeah source you will take web server so what are the options you get in source by writing a rule mm -hmm. so while writing a rule what if you select source what are the options you will get okay uh, already i have given the ip address ranges i don't have to give the source ip uh, mm. name so then i come to destination mm. uh, in destination also i will assign the ip address range in mm. the uh, in the ip address range we have missions mm. so then uh, i will allow the port 80 so destination what you give just you should tell me clearly okay. don't skip anything okay you said that source you are going to give ips okay. and what about destination destination what do you will give ip ip address range i will give so which ip address range i mean uh, we have 20 missions the installed uh, ip address range okay fine so now i'll go with another topic so now i'll go for the load balancers okay so now what is a health probe health probe is a heartbeat of the load balancer it checks the while we enable the heartbeat while we enable the health probes it send the duplicate uh, packets to the servers mm. and it checks whether it was working or not and if it's not it will uh, send a so what exactly it will check uh, packets whether it was working if or server not. is up still still if health check is failed what do you mean that if, the check, will, mm. if the check is will it will automatically send no no, no i'm saying you said it will check heartbeat of the server mm -hmm. my i am saying that yes my server is up and running mm -hmm. but still my health probe is not succeeding mm -hmm. what do you think what was the issue error so, on health probes okay so fine what is session affinity in load balancers session affinity if we got if we are working on the one mission we need to rely on that particular mission for the end of the session we use the session mm -hmm. affinity if you right. if i connect to the one server mm -hmm. and i am working uh, on the on that server mm -hmm. until my work is completed i use the uh, then we use the uh, session affinity uh, what are the pass services you know storage account mm -hmm. um, application security group application security group okay mm -hmm. app service mm -hmm. database service okay so right coming to terraform so you are Okay, with Terraform, right? Okay. So, what do you understand by workspaces? While Terraform we, workspace. While we are working in our module levels, we use workspaces. We we create codes mm -hmm. uh, in different uh, areas. If we create one code, we can't apply multiple times. Mm -hmm. Then we use the workspace. If we create a workspace, the state file will create it. Okay, what is state file? State file is a it maintains the resources what we have created. Mm. It maintains the infrastructure what we have created. If state file is corrupted or deleted, what will happen? What is impact? We can retrieve it. Sir. Mm? We can retrieve it. How? Terrible. No, I have asked about if my state file is deleted, what will be the impact? Nothing will be impacted, sir. He, the state file will be deleted in Terraform only. Mm. Uh, we can lose the control from Terraform only. Okay. We can retrieve the state file from Azure. How? Uh, by using the command Terraform import. That's uh, it. Uh, by what we want, we can retrieve Terraform import mm. and we use the uh, file name, what we uh, want. File name? What we have deleted, block name. We create the block, then we import the data what which data just can you tell me okay just tell me about terraform import command how to use it terraform import command to import the data first we need to create the block mm -hmm. and then we use the command terraform import and uh, we need to write the block what we required mm -hmm. then it will be important. that's it terraform import block name no. okay so so what exactly what happens exactly when you by execute terraform plan it will check the plan uh, whether the configuration was right or wrong okay so what is terraform in it it validates the code uh, and downloads the uh, plugins related to that code okay what is data block in data block we use the existing resources by taking the id 
already existing resource IDs. Okay. By using them, we can create. Okay. Thanks, Ganesh. Okay.